On this episode of Hands on Cars, Kevin shows you how to get perfect panel gaps using an Eastwood MiG-175 and contour body filler before bringing you the coolest cars from the SEMA show in Las Vegas. Hey guys, welcome to Hands on Cars. Well, Zed Sled, it's a roller, baby, finally. And it feels great to have this car on its own wheels and tires with the rust repair done, and now we can get started on the bodywork. And the suspension is absolutely gorgeous. It came from Classic Performance Products. Check it out. We started by assembling the fully smoothed and painted subframe with all the classic performance products parts, starting with the lower control arms, the uprights, upper control arms, sway bar, finally finishing everything off with the beautiful C5 Corvette brake upgrade that gives you twin piston calipers as well as 13 inch rotors on the front, making this thing perform as good as it looks. Now, any time that you just paint the subframe and refresh it with new parts that are painted well, it brings it up a couple of notches, but this is ridiculous. This looks really, really nice. We've got the subframe bathed in, well, it started with fiberglass filler, then with a contour glazing putty, then finally high build polyester surfacer in the contour line, then Boulevard Black and Rat Rod Flat Clear. It's just gorgeous. You combine that with the classic performance tubular upper and lower control arms, the new steering box, all the goodies here, including urethane engine mounts. Uh, this thing's gonna be really serious and it looks great, but that's really not what we're about. The reason I wanted this assembled is to get it down on its suspension so that the load on the chassis is even and distributed just how it's gonna sit on the street. So now we can start tweaking body panels, starting with the door. Let's talk about door gaps. Now the driver's door is arguably the most important panel on the whole vehicle as far as fitment goes and it's kind of what the whole front end is based off of. Let's face it, you can't adjust the quarter panel once it's welded in and you got to work your way forward from the door. So we're going to start with this guy and see where we're at. A little bit of lubrication on your fasteners makes this job a little bit easier. There might be primer, might be a media blasting dust in there and this just sort of eases the way. I like to start them by hand just to make sure I'm not cross-threading, even though, as my good friend Tommy Vosher says, cross-threads are tight threads. Now, normally I like to adjust doors without the strike in place. That way the door is of its own free will and it's not binding and it, you're not cheating using the striker. But because they're stupid heavy, we're gonna go ahead and put the striker in just to help support the back of the door until we get it close, and then narrow it down. One place you want to start, seems like you'd want to start back here, but typically you want to start and make the bottom of the door parallel to the rocker panel. Start there, and then you can mess around with back and forth. And it's kind of a dance because you've got several axes to work on. You've got the in and out here, you've got the upper and lower there, back and forth, and top to bottom. So it's going to take some dialing in, but if you know where to start, rocker, gap, then you set your fender and move it in and out of the fender. Rocker first, door gap second to the quarter, then move on to the fender. You should be okay. That's good. Okay, so after futzing for about an hour on this door, I've got it lined up where I'm okay with my gap across the bottom, although it's a little large, but the gap here is where it needs to be. I can't bring the door down anymore because my style line on the quarter and the door match up just about perfectly. And my level across two panels is good. So we've reached a starting point. It's wide here, it's okay here, it's okay, it's, it's okay. And if you travel down this gap, you can see where it kind of wows out and comes back in. But we're not ready to start shaping that yet because we haven't established the alignment on the front fender. So that's what's next. 
Now we gotta put the radiator support on in order to hang the fender. So we're gonna protect our beautifully painted subframe so we don't end up with a redo. So just like the subframe bushings themselves, the radiator support bushings, well, they were garbage. They're dry rotted, cracked, and they're just worn out. And there's no sin in that. This is an old car, but we could do better than this. So just like on the subframe, we're using Detroit Speed and Engineering's hard-coated aluminum solid bushings that are going to offer no reflection. And the best thing is that they're never, ever going to need replacing. Using a drift really helps pull things into alignment. You can get everything in the right grouping without stripping a bunch of threads, without knocking your panels into everything else. You've got to start somewhere, typically at the bottom. Again, rocker doesn't move, adjust to the rocker. That's pretty good. Style line. Okay. So after messing around for another hour, I've got the fender fitting okay to the door. And these cars brand new. Their panel gaps were horrible, horrible fitment. And so what are we doing? Are we doing just a quick splash job? No, we're gonna make a nice paint job on this car. So we got a crossroads. We can either send this thing on as a roller and then go have a couple adult beverages and start over again, or we can finish what we started. So we're gonna finish what we started, show you guys how to get perfect panel gaps. But it all starts with metal. All right, so let's look at our panel gap. We've got, it's okay there. It's a little tight right here. Widens back out again. And then it's okay up here, but it's a little wide there and you can't see it from there, but it's in at the door and out at the quarter. So, time for brute force. What we're gonna do is take a spoon and just work this. It's just, it's just metal. And at some point, it'll listen to you. The top edge of this door frame will come out and conform without destroying this panel right in here. So we're gonna come back, give it another little stretcheroo. All right, now we're flush. It's still wide, but at least it's found a happy place there. So here what I'm gonna do is take my other fair amount spoon I'm gonna use that as kind of a gauge. See, it's a little tight there. I'm just working it. And it's just sort of giving it some relief, but it's still not wide enough. We can do a little bit on this side. You don't want to do too bad. You want a parallel gap. You don't want a gap that looks like the Snake River. So. Keep in mind, anytime you push metal around, it doesn't just disappear, it goes somewhere. So right here, it came out. So now we gotta do a little bit of finessing on here, to keep from bulging out. We wanna bodywork those panels together and make it really nice so it doesn't upset us later. But we're getting there. Now there's a lot you can do with filler, but I don't ever wanna think about it as a reconstructor. I wanna do that all in metal. Now we can smooth things with filler, but let's not construct with filler. So. This door is, well, it's, it's metal, so we can weld on it. I've got a MiG-175 sitting right over in the corner, so I'm gonna expose this, get it ready to uh, build it up. Don't go too crazy on this edge, because it's just a folded over panel. It's only 20 gauge, and it could get thin. You don't want to burn through. Hands-On Cars is brought to you by the Eastwood Company. When you're restoring a car, truck, or motorcycle, Eastwood has everything you need to do the job right. Eastwood, since 1978. Hey guys, Kevin Tates here, Hands On Cars. We're at SEMA 2014. Everywhere you look, there's unbelievable automotive eye candy. This place is packed and we're gonna go check out some cool stuff.
Hey man, you never know who you're gonna run into. Tim Strange, how you doing, bud? Good, how you doing, man? Good, hanging in. What are you doing? Just walking around? Yeah, having some meetings. I'm on the new product panel that I help judge the new products here yeah. this weekend, and uh, been a part of that team for like 11 years. So it's yep. kind of cool to be a part of the industry and see all the new products that they bring. And there's some amazing stuff here this year. Yeah, cool. You got any cars out here? Nothing this year. Uh huh. Um, I had two here last year. I got two coming next year. I need to figure it out a little bit better, so I just right. space it out so I'm not killing myself with two cars each year. But yeah, yeah it's kind of nice. And if I don't bring a car, I kind of get more business stuff handled out. Well, well, it's, it's, it's a de-stress, too, to not have something out here, yeah. not have that time crunch and that pressure, right? Yeah, and it's it's still kind of nice to have a project here with all the companies that support you through the years, but yeah. you kind of forget people on the outside. They just think it's a big car show. Yeah. But this is for the industry to do business. Yeah. You, you talk to your people, you sell your products, your Absolutely. partner, guys in your shop and stuff, your customers, and people that help you on your personal projects. So yeah. it's just nice to come here and put names to a face that you've emailed or whatever yeah. and just shake mm -hmm. hands and... You never yeah. know who well, you're going to see at the SEMA show. Absolutely. Yeah, and a guy like you, getting serious, a guy like you, it, it wouldn't be possible for you to build the cars that you build without strategic partners like everybody on the floor here. So right, what right. a great way to meet people and talk to people and, and yeah. just say thanks, too. Yeah, not only with the hot rods, you know, we've been lucky for like eight, nine years, we built stuff for corporate Ford and Chevy and Toyota and stuff, so yeah. it's nice, you know, to meet some of those people here. Yeah. And yeah, it's just part of it. And and have some fun. Yeah, so. get a little stupid. Yeah. Cool. Nice to see you, man. Yeah, good seeing you. All right, see you. Who knew? Well, you guys know that I'm a Mustang guy and I've had the privilege of seeing this particular car on its way in construction and actually kind of come out of your head. Chris and I first met, this is Chris Lee, Kiwi Classics and Customs. We first met on the set of a TV show called Search and Restore, where Chris was a volunteer, and we started, we found out real quick, we've got this in common, we're Mustang guys. And this thing is outstanding, man. So Thank it's a you. really cool concept. You knocked it out of the park. Let's start here. Uh, KSV 9000, what's the significance? Okay, well the 9000 is for the size of the engine. It's a nine liter big block Ford. <laughs> So that's 9,000 cc, yeah. so that's the 9,000. Uh, the KSV is Kiwi Special Vehicles. Right, which is your brand that's on your my custom brand vehicles. On my custom car. Yeah. Thank you for asking me to shoot the car. I, I, I was honored that you wanted me to spray the car, and, and, and we had a great time. It was not without its challenges, too, because of the time crunch, but yep. I, I'm happy with it. I hope you're happy with it. We've had some nice comments. Oh, look, Kevin, so. I'm, I'm delighted with the paint job. It's uh, come up tremendously, and uh, yeah. the ghost graphic is exactly how I wanted it to be. Yeah. And so it's the, the tribal tattoo is down the side. There's a, right on the front. I'm not sure whether you'll pick it up on camera, but there's, there's a Maori warrior, which is our indigenous people yeah and then a silver fern coming back off his head which is a, a New Zealand icon yeah uh, and people are calling the car and this is matrix paint yes yes it is matrix paint people are calling the, the color root beer but it's a black with the red pearl black with the red pearl and a couple of other secret ingredients that matrix threw in there to make a pretty impressive color it looks black most of the time yeah and a lot of the times the ghost graphics really do completely disappear yeah but you know what, it's almost a shame to put a paint job that detracts from your metalwork. Thank you but very much. But let's start looking at some of these features. Let's start with the hood. Talk to me about the hood. So we took the stock hood, went to pick apart the junkyard, found a hood off another car, and grafted it on the top, created a cow hood out of it. Yeah. As it turns out, it's a 98 Pontiac Grand Am hood, but <laughs> who would know? Well, the thing that works, and you pointed this out to me, is this, the peak, the style line, matches perfectly. Perfectly with the Mustang. The Mustang thing. So, yeah. yeah. The, the sheet, the balance, uh, again, I didn't want to go fiberglass, wanted to keep it all steel. Yeah. Wanted to make it more of a factory look, that it's something that Ford might have done or Shelby might have done. What's different about the wheel arch on this fender? We, uh, there really just wasn't, to get it down to the right height that I wanted, yeah. you just couldn't turn the wheel. Yeah. So really the, the obvious solution was to cut the wheel arch out of the fender, raise it up two inches, yeah. and put it back together. But yeah, the, the fender's also been stretched out about on the front about two and a half inches each side. And, and it's a Coke bottle wide body. I've seen yeah. wide bodies where they just bring them out. And that's fine. I like that. Ring Brothers had one like that. Yeah, but what I really good. like, what you've done, is you've really sculpted the lines and it's nice and tasty and nice and subtle. What gave you that idea? 
Uh, I'm a big fan of the old SCCA cars. Okay. And that's it's kind of a little bit of a homage to that yep. era and the way they did things back then. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, they pumped everything out, stretched everything out as much as they could within the rules and that sort of thing. And I, I just like the style of those old cars. Yeah. Are the doors stock? The doors uh, basically stop with the exception of the Kindigit door handles. Just push at the back like it might be on your button. Yeah. Pull it out. Away you go. Yeah. It's done. Nice. Nice tight panel gaps. Let's talk about the quarter panels. The fenders come out about three and a half inches. Mm -hmm. uh, the inner wheelhouse has gone in an inch. And we've ended up with about 14 inches of room under there. Shelby lights, we like this. Shelby lights, that's a little, I tried to put a little Kiwi twist on as much as I could. And Shelby lights, very popular in the Mustangs, but these ones, I've mounted them from the back, from inside the trunk. Yeah. Rather yeah. than screwing them in from the outside, and it just slimmed the bezel down. There's another subtlety that a lot of people overlook. It's your roof line at the back, your sail panels. Yeah. That was a neat touch. I saw this car in bare metal, and, and you pointed it out to me, and it's just a nice, nice touch. And I call it a semi fastback. Kind of, I have to give credit to my son for that one. Okay. Um, he, um, we bought the car, and he thought it was cool, but he liked the fastback better. Yeah, yeah. So, stretch the rear pillars out four inches. Uh, and it's proved to be really effective modification. Mm -hmm. it, it changes the, the side profile of the car, just flows it out, makes it makes it look like it's going a little faster when it's so yeah, stationary. Yeah. Interior-wise, uh, we put a Thunderbird rear seat in it, um, and so we're wandering around a, a junkyard, and here's this old about 1970 Thunderbird, yeah. and thought, okay, well, let's, let's grab this and see if we can make it work. Yeah, and it came out really well. They're late model seats. It's out of. They're out of an Audi A4 convertible. The story behind those is my wife drives a little Audi convertible. And uh -huh. I drive it occasionally. And it's like, man, these seats are really comfortable. Yeah. So again, not out of. You know, they came out of a wreck, mm -hmm. and not off the. Not out of a catalogue. And I don't know. That, for me, that's what hot rodding is about. So yeah. Didn't want to go wild on the dash and like just put a big sheet of metal and put a whole bunch of big gauges in it. Yeah. So I took a two stock 66 Mustang dash mm -hmm. bezels and um, cut them up, welded them together mm -hmm. and just created a custom dashboard that looks like it's a 66 Mustang yeah. dash but it doesn't. Yeah. We've danced around this. Show me the money. Let's see what a 750 horsepower big block looks like in a first gen Mustang. That is the funny end of the car. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Now that is sexy. Let's talk about trick flow. It's all over the place. What's going on? Okay, well, TrickFlow came to the party and helped us out with the complete top end kit. It's aluminum CNC heads, uh, they're matching intake manifold, rock covers, uh, all the roller rockers. Uh, it's a complete top end and uh, combine that with the 557 stroker <laughs> lower end, uh, it's making some good numbers. Yeah, who's your engine builder? John Broussard built the engine. Johnny B. Johnny B. A lot of the viewers will know him. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, he's helping us with Z Sled. Right, yeah. exactly. And uh, yeah, he built a very streetable engine, runs on pump gas, it's yep. 93. We had some hood clearance problems. Uh -huh. um, and trying to fit in a conventional air cleaner with a, with a base and a filter element and a lid on it, um, with the little bolt that holds it down, it just, the hood just wasn't gonna shut. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we actually created a system where the air filter fits in the underside of the hood. The, the top outer skin of the hood is the top of the air cleaner. That's the lid. Okay. So it, it, it screws up from underneath. Yeah. And it sits down on the little foam seal around the, the air cleaner base. Yeah. And that's your induction. And our inlet's functional ram air. Yes. And it's also um, the cowl vent at the back, so yeah. it can pull air from either end of the hood. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we get lots of nice fresh cold air. It's making 750 horse, 754 <laughs> foot pounds of torque. Good God. And that's really man. the number that, that, that counts. Well, the torque the is huge. Horsepower is an equation. Torque is what moves you down the road. That's right. It gets you from A to B. Yep. Yep. And uh, it's a Holly fuel injection system. Uh huh. And uh, works very well. Uh, very user friendly. Mm hmm And again, it was a hood clearance issue. The, the EFI system is shorter. Yeah. Than a, than an old school carburetor. Okay. Um, so it just helped us get. We needed every quarter of an inch we could. Yeah. A couple of people have said to me, "Why did you put a 557 in it? In, a, in uh -huh. a, an early first generation Mustang?" My answer is, well. It's the biggest one we could find. <laughs> if there'd been a 600 and something, it'd have a 600 and something. 
So the first time we saw this car, it was at the Good Guys National Nationals yeah. uh, in front of your booth in Eastwood Epoxy Primer. Yeah. Metal work was done, body work had just begun, the engine was sitting out on a crate. Let's talk about uh, Eastwood. You've got Eastwood tools and equipment. Uh, how important of a role did Eastwood play in, in building this car? Well, they played a big role, the reality is. Um, all the welding on it, and there's a lot of welding in there. Yeah. Uh, it's all been done on, on Eastwood welders, being yeah. MIG, TIG, you know, little MIG, big MIG. Yeah. You know, um, used a mixture of all of them. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of Eastwood body products in it, the Eastwood primer, yeah. epoxy primers, and, and some of the high fill polyester primers, mm -hmm. and that sort of stuff. And so it, it's all in there. Yeah. Uh, and Eastwood's good stuff. Well, it is good stuff, and it's nice to see you using stuff like that, and, and you don't have to, but it's nice yeah. to see that you do. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's a choice. It's not, I'm not sponsored by Eastwood. Yeah. Uh, it's just, over the years, that's what I've found. It's like, hey, this stuff, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So you, you buy more. And I, I just want to say thank you for letting me be a part of this car, for asking me to shoot it. It was an honor that you that you asked me to do it, and, uh, and I'm probably as proud of it as you are. So uh, well done, man. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Kevin. It's Absolutely. Been, it's been fun. It's been a blast. It has been a blast. And this yeah. is not this is not going to be the last one. We'll do it again. I hope so. Yeah, cool, I hope dude. So. <laughs>
Remember, we've got way too much on there, and 80% of this stuff is going to end up on the floor and powder. All right. It's firm, but it's not totally locked up. Now I'm blocking with 36. Establishing the shape. Okay, now this is looking nice and even, but that sharp line, that's not what you want. So what I typically do is take my paper and I roll that edge over. Otherwise, it looks artificial and you have this peaked edge that just doesn't look natural. So I'm gonna roll that edge over. It gives it the look that I'm after. of a really crisp and precise factory looking body style line. Now, there's some other clues here. So this is dark, it's low. This is feathered out nicely into the panel around it, but that's low right there. So when I wipe again, I'm going with a different style putty because my foundation's established. So I'm gonna rough this up just to taste, even though it'll probably stick, probably is disappointing when it doesn't work out. So I'm gonna hit these lows. 36. And get ready for the next step. Second stage is with Eastwood's Contour Polyester Filler. And again, we don't need a whole lot. Just like the name says, we're trying to contour the surface where it's nice and smooth and even from panel to panel, and ready for the next step, which would be a high build poly filler, and more blocking. I mentioned there's lots of blocking, and sanding and blocking, sanding and blocking, sanding and blocking. Again, I'm not doing what you think I'm doing. I'm not making a gap out of plastic. What I am doing is creating a situation where I can block across this panel give myself the effect that I want and a nice really flat panel gap. And again, just a skim coat, just a skim coat. Happy little filler. Polyester surface enhancement material. Surface enhancement, not surface creation, folks. While I'm waiting for my filter to dry, I want to show you something that makes your plastic spreaders last quite a while. I've got pre-painting prep, and basically I'm just kind of wetting down my spreader with the pre and wiping it off. It acts like a mild solvent and a lubricant, which is kind of what it is, and you end up with your spreader that you can use for next time, and you can do the same thing with your spreader board if you're not using the peel away sheets. I'm still using 36 on this because I want to shape. I don't want to sand. Where my soft sander comes in. I want that shape. I can push that shape. Get my paper. And that guy stays curved. Now that I got the filler knocked down with 36, I'm gonna hit it with 80 grit and just kind of refine the shape and refine the contour of the new gap that I've created. All right, on the inside of the jam, yes, we used filler. And in fact, I used two stages of filler, but look here. 
this is bare steel, that's bare steel, that's bare steel, that's a bare steel burn through. The rest of it is, well, there's more bare steel. The rest of it is just corrected. So again, we're not abusing the filler, we're enhancing the surface. It's a very thin skim coating of filler that has corrected this gap because we did our metal work first. Metal, then filler, creates a really nice situation. And by the time this is blocked and painted, well, it's not gonna look street rod perfect, but it's gonna look great. So I've always said the time investment doesn't cost you dollars, it just costs you minutes. And that's really the difference between a Mako job and a Boyd Coddington job, or a Chip Foose job, or a Charlie Hutton job, or a Randy Borchetting job. Um, invest the time, people. Budget doesn't mean compromise. Budget just means spending your money and your time wisely. So I've got another 15 or 20 panel gaps to do on this car, but I'm not gonna throw my credit card at it. I'm not gonna throw the checkbook at it. I'm just gonna spend the time on it. So hope you guys pick something up out of this one. Keep on watching Hands on Cars. Check us out on YouTube or at eastwood.com. See you next time. Zed Sled, coming along. On the next episode of Hands on Cars, Kevin sprays Elasti Wrap, puts frame ties on the Camaro, and explains the advantages of a pro touring style suspension.